Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greetings and once again, welcome everyone. This is Telecommunications and Computer Network. In this class, we are going to talk about computer hardware and software and what do we mean actually by uh, each one of them and what are the main uh, actually uh, types of hardware and software and so on. First, let us discuss about computer hardware. What do we actually mean by computer hardware? Computer hardware is any part that we can actually touch and see. And we have input, we have the outputs, and we have the actually the processing uh, hardware. For example, we have the input that we actually uh, deal with like the interface like the mouse keyboard microphone and so on and we have the processing uh, hardware like for example the mother uh, board like the RAM ROM uh, CPU the power supply all these kind of you know uh, hardware and then we have the final output for example uh, mp3 file this is actually one of the outputs that we actually uh, use in our daily basis using a computer. Computer hardware is once again any physical components that we need to actually make our computer function or run, all right? So a motherboard, for example, is an electronic circuit board in a computer which interconnects hardware devices attached to it the motherboard is the main hardware that we need in a computer without the the motherboard there is no computer because the motherboard is actually uh you know responsible to connect all computer parts together at the end to make the computer actually function as we can see here this is the motherboard of the computer which we actually attach our storage we attach our memory uh, ram and rom and we attach uh, uh, everything to it even the keyboard mouse uh, you know the the display devices we attached everything in this motherboard without a motherboard there's actually no computer even the the, the electricity uh, supply it will be attached to uh, the motherboard of the computer and we have four main categories for computer hardware devices we have the input the processing devices output devices and we have the storage devices the input devices that we actually use to uh, input data or raw data to our computers for example mouse keyboard mic and so on but this data we actually uh, input to our computer it needs to be processed before we actually can see them this is the uh, function of processing devices to process the raw data that we already on input uh, instructions into information and convert these raw data into information that we can see we can hear and so on and then we have the output the output devices that is actually the, uh, the the devices that allow us as a human to understand and see for example images we can see images because of the processing data that the computer did and then uh, it 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 you know uh, makes us see this picture this uh, this way and then we have the storage devices which are the responsible responsible for keeping or saving the data the information retention for example the hard disk the hard disk is actually one of the storage devices the pen drive is actually one of the storage devices so these main categories four categories are the main computer hardware devices and these as we can see in the picture are some of the computer hardware for example the ram memory cpu processor motherboard hard drive floppy drive cd-rom uh, the, the mouse uh, keyboards 
modems, video cards, monitors, printers, all these devices are hardware because it is actually uh, physical uh, that we can touch, we can see. This is the hardware computer devices. Uh, when, when, when I, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the input devices, we can actually, uh, you know, have an idea about how does it work. But when I'm talking about the processing devices, we can, we, uh, most of the time, we actually cannot see the processing devices. Uh, you know, for example, the motherboard or the uh, CPU, for example. So how actually does it work? Uh, when I input the data, it goes, for example, uh, when I want to record, just like what I'm doing right now, this voice, my voice, will go through the CPU. This CPU will process this voice and make it, uh, like, you know, as a product, the final product, the output, as uh, a file that I can open and listen to it. This is what do we mean by processing devices. So what actually happens is it handles this information or raw data that I'm recording right now and it converts this kind of data to something that a human being can deal with. So when a computer receives the data from an input device, the data must go through the intermediate stage before it can be sent to an output device. Just like uh, I mentioned in the uh, recording voice example. And when talking about the processing devices, we have two main categories or two main devices that are responsible for processing the data, which are the CPU and GPU. Central Processing Unit, CPU, and Graphics Processing Unit. So once again, when we talk about the hardware, we have so many hardware, like the input, the processing data, the storage data, and so on. So one of the uh, hardware devices are the input devices. So how we can define the define our input devices is any hardware device that actually sends the data to a computer. So the main, of the main purpose of any input device is to actually send this raw data to our computer device, which allow us as a human to interact and control with this data. For example, as I mentioned, if we can use a mic, we actually go and record, use a software to record this raw data that I'm going to enter or send to a computer. Uh, the computer will process later on so that we can actually deal, edit with the uh, voice uh, file and then maybe send it out to uh, my students and so on. So this actually an example of the hardware devices. The first section is input devices. Then the uh, second part or category of the hardware, we have the output devices. The output devices has a very uh, actually important function, which is to receive the data from the computer to make it as readable as a human that we can actually see whether to display this data in a projection, for example, or uh, a speaker, we can actually listen to music through the computer. This is one of the output devices. The printers, we can actually print our, for example, documents. This is actually one more example for uh, output devices, for a physical reproduction. We can actually make uh, the, the um, for example, a document to a, a, a real uh, production, which is actually seen and touched. This is the main purpose of the output devices. 
And then the third type of or category of hardware, which is the storage devices, which is, you know, most of the time referred as a digital storage or, or a hard disk or the medium storage. And the main purpose of the storage devices are to hold the data to save our data whether temporarily or permanently that's why we have both ram and rom and for us to understand the differences between ram and rom and by the way each computer or laptop has both ram and rom but the main difference is that the ram which stands for random access memory and ROM, which stands for uh, read only memory. The RAM is actually volatile memory that temporarily stores the file that you are working on right now. For example, you are typing in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word right now without clicking save, for example. So the RAM is actually uh, volatile. To, to actually store the uh, temporary stores that you are working right now. And then the ROM is non-volatile memory that is permanently stores instructions for your computer. All right, so the, these actually, uh, both RAM and ROM are very uh, required and needed both of them in any computer or laptop, all right? And this is actually the main uh, differences between both of them. Okay, so we have talked enough about hardware, types of hardware, categories of hardware. Let's move on and talk about the software, the things that actually we deal with uh, but cannot actually touch. There's no physical, uh, you know, appearance for the computer software so for the computer software we have three main categories the system software for example windows and then we have application software that we actually use to uh, go along with our tasks okay and then we have programming software system software as an example, uh, Windows, okay, and then the application software, for example, Microsoft Word or the Microsoft Office package that we can consider as application that we use in a daily basis. And then we have the programming software that we actually use to program new software, okay, for example, Java, um, uh, you know, C++ and so on. Why do, we, uh, why do we need software? We need software to make us as a human able to actually deal with the hardware do we have. If we have a motherboard and we have RAM and ROM and storage and everything, all the uh, you know, hardware devices in a computer, but we don't have a software, how can we actually deal or handle the uh, computer we actually cannot deal with any computer without the software so the software are are actually designed to make us control and coordinate the procedure and functions of any computer hardware and they actually enable functional interaction between hardware software and the user so what makes it actually happens is the software software make us as users consumers to be able to use these uh, hardware that actually are placed in any computer and uh, the software carries out uh, middleman tasks to ensure communication between other software and hardware to allow uh, harmon harmonious uh, co coexistence with the user so the main purpose again for any software is to make sure that we are able to actually communicate with these hardware that are placed in any computer and to make use of it. As we mentioned, we have three 
main uh, software. One of them, the first one is the system software. And this system software itself, it has five main categories. Th so the system software can be categorized under the following operating system, which actually harness the communication between the hardware, system programs, and other applications. And then we have the device driver, which enables the device communication with the operating system itself. And then we have the firmware, which enables the device to control and identification. And then we have translator to translate high level languages to low level machine codes. And then finally, we have utility, which uh, ensures the optimum functionality of devices and applications. So these are the main categories under the, the system software category itself. Second, we have the application software. As I mentioned, the application software is used to, uh, for a training specific task or uh, uses a capacity of a computer directly for specific tasks and, and are used to uh, actually manipulate text, graphics, and numbers. Uh, application softwares, for example, uh, Microsoft Word, we can use to actually deal with text, type using the computer and so on and then we have for example uh, adobe photoshop for example actually this is one of the application as well that allow us to deal with picture images graphics and and so on and then we have for example adobe premiere pro this is actually one more application software which make us uh, use the computer to edit and to create to product uh, videos right so actually application software is uh, you know are, are so many that we actually can use for so many purposes so any any software that you use for a specific task is an application software let's have a look of you know uh, some of the difference, you know, different types of application software. We have, for example, word processing software, for example, Microsoft Word, WordPad, and Notepad, and so on. We have database software, uh, Oracle, Access, uh, Microsoft Access, and so on. And then we have spreadsheet software, for example, Apple Numbers, Microsoft Excel. And then we have multimedia software, Real Player, Media Player. We have presentation, like PowerPoint. We have enterprise software, a customer relationship management system. We have the information worker software, like documentation tool, educational software, dictionaries, uh, Google Earth, NASA, so on simulation flight and scientific simulators we have content access software for example accessing content through media players web browsers and then we have application suits for example open office microsoft office software for engineering and product development ide or integrated development environments so we have actually maybe unlimited types of software that we actually use and it's actually based on your uh, goal what is your goal using your computer if you are a graphic designer you are going to use Adobe Photoshop to actually produce graphics and uh, uh, posters and texts with with images and so on so application software are there to help you as a consumer to make the best use of your computer. And then we have the programming software. Programming software usually uh, help programmers to use computer as, uh, you know, as a device to actually code or program or to develop their own softwares. So programming software provides tools to actually assist any programmer in their writing. 
uh, using the writing computer programs and software using dif different programming languages in a more convenient way there are so many tools and there are so many languages that are, are that you know programmers use uh, to actually uh, program and code their own software and then we have programming software examples for example Turbo C, uh, we have a C++, we have Development Environment IDE, we have so many, uh, you know, software, and we have Java, we have PHP, and it's actually uh, unlimited programming software. Then we have what is called subtype of computer software. We have like, you know, uh, apart from the major types of co computer software, we have many other uh, subtypes, such as freeware, which is free, you know, uh, to download by anyone. For example, Google Talk, Yahoo Messenger, Uternet, and so on. And then we have the shareware. Shareware is actually any software that usually distributed for free on a trial basis and it can be shared without violation of any laws they usually stop working or promote the user to purchase the full version okay so this kind of software you can download for free and for a limited time only and then you have to actually purchase this software to continue using it for example when the software and then we have open source software which is software with open source code which is av available to all users as such anyone can make changes to it and release their own new version for example we have android os operating system and we have open office and etc okay after getting to know the computer components the hardware software and so on and what are the differences between them what are the role of each one of them i have uh, uploaded in uh, e-learning a link in youtube that is going to actually uh, show you how the computer assembly is going actually is, is it, it's it, it works so you need to watch this video maybe repeat it once again and then make sure you understand how computer works so, so this video is actually for you to help you out understand uh, it's like a simulation to uh, see how computer works and you know that's very much it for today's class and um, when we meet online every time don't forget that there will be an e-learning uh, activity that you need to actually uh, answer it's, it's you know it's something like a quiz uh, very simple from the slides itself i just want to make sure that everything is understandable to you and uh, please if you have any more questions do ask me when we meet online and uh, wish you all the best and take care bye bye